This video is about the basic extrusion in Blender and its different types. So for starters to extrude in Blender, you just have to click on the object you want to extrude, press tab to go to edit mode, 3 to go to face select, click on the face you want to extrude, then E which is basically the shortcut for extruding and just click on where you want it to go. You can also type the value you want and press enter while you are extruding and even hold control to snap to other objects or the grid given that you've already set your snap settings. Now the shortcut for the snap settings is by holding down control shift and tab. If you go to vertex selection by pressing 1, extruding a vertex will create a segment. If you go to edge selection by pressing 2, extruding an edge will create a face. And if you extrude a face, it creates a cube. When extruding vertices by default, it might not snap to an axis. To do this, while you're in the middle of extruding, you can press X, Y, or Z to snap it correspondingly. Also, you can hold down shift X, Y, or Z for multiple axes. Or the way I do it is just hold down the middle mouse button and release it to an axis and from there I can just click where I want it to go. This works for other things such as moving objects too by the way. You can extrude multiple selections at the same time. If you extrude multiple faces with different normals, by default Blender is just gonna round off or will just find the center of the selections and extrude it from there. And that's because the default pivot is set as median point. The shortcut to access this pivot point is by pressing the period key and if you change it to extrude with individual origins, each face will extrude along its individual direction. You might want to be careful with this though as this will change a lot of things when you're modeling. Something to keep in mind when extruding is that if you are in the middle of the process and you decide to cancel halfway and press escape, that doesn't actually cancel the extrusion. Blender will still extrude that but will leave it to the original location. I just did that and as you can see, if I grab the cancelled extrusion, there exists an overlapping plane. And so to avoid this, you're gonna have to press Ctrl Z to undo or hit X to dissolve edges or hit Alt Z, box select the vertices and press M to merge. On the other hand, you can also make use of this effect and make it work like the inset tool by pressing S. The thing with this though is that you will not be able to access the settings for the inset tool. Another thing you can do with this effect is by applying it to a loop of vertices, faces and edges and again scaling them. In vertex mode for example, select a loop by holding Alt and clicking on one of the vertices that you want to work with. Now extrude that and hit escape and by the way make sure you don't click on anything else as Blender will select the extrusion automatically and in case you have you can just hit undo and you'll be back to the selection. Now hit S to scale and then left click or type a value to end the process. And like most Blender tools, right after extruding, a pop-up setting is going to show up in the lower left corner and in there you can flip normals. Normals are basically the direction of the face. You can also dissolve orthogonal edges which deletes excess planes that show up when you extrude inward by the edges of a geometry. You can also move the extrusion here and even adjust its orientation. This pop-up goes away as soon as you click on the viewport but you can access this by pressing F9 given that you haven't modified anything else yet. You can also access the extrude tool on the left panel and if the left panel isn't there the shortcut is T and the only difference when you use the tool in this panel is that you have to work with the gizmo with this one and if you press the extrude region icon long enough a bunch of other options for extruding will pop up. You can also access these options by selecting a face and holding down Alt E. Now be sure to select a face first or not all the options will show up and when it does you'll actually find that there are more options there than the left panel and by now you might have noticed that this video is a bit compact and on point and that's because I literally spent days polishing this. And a simple like would mean a lot to me. Now let's talk about these options. Extruding faces along normals extrudes according to the direction of each face. Quick tip, you can choose to display the normals by going to edit mode and on the upper right corner click on the arrow for the viewport overlays panel and in the bottom part there you will find the option to turn the normal display on and off. Now back to the extrusion. If you extrude faces that meet in a single edge, you might notice that the edge part is a bit crooked. That's because it's kind of considering the normals of the edges and the vertices alongside it. But you can adjust this by checking offset even in the pop-up settings. Extrude individual faces works a bit like extrude normals but it extrudes separately for each selection. A cool effect that you can make with this type is by setting the pivot point to individual origins, selecting a set of faces with the same normals and using the extrude individual option and scale down those faces. The extrude manifold option works almost like checking the dissolving orthogonal edges in the basic extrusion but get this, the standard extrusion kind of leaves another end gone by the recessed faces while the extrude manifold option eliminates that thus kind of makes it a bit more cleaner. Extrude repeat, extrudes the selection multiple times and in the pop-up settings you can adjust the steps and the direction. The spin option kind of works like the spin tool if you're familiar with that if you select a vertex, edge or face and it works kind of like an array modifier if you select an entire object but unlike the array modifier which can actually use objects as reference to rotate around, the spin extrusion option just like the spin tool can only rotate around the 3D cursor. Quick tip, the way I would use this types of tools is by turning on snap by holding shift tab and for this example I'm using an empty as my reference object and so I 
would have to have my vertex snap on. And what you want to do from here is hold shift and right click to snap the cursor to the exact point and now you have your 3D cursor position. Or you can do it the other way around. You can select the reference first, hold shift S and press 2 and now again the 3D cursor is ready and you can now use the spin tool. And in the settings you can adjust the steps, angle and orientation. Now if I missed anything too important or if you ever caught any mistakes please feel free to write it down in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy these types of videos and you might want to check out my channel for more.